Hey there, and welcome to my channel. I'm Crafty Kathy. I'm the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I'm so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. You guys know over the last few weeks, I have been trying to not go to any thrift stores and just use my own stash of what I have. And I showed you guys last week my front porch and the clutter that's on the front porch and something else came up. My husband is going to get the garage sheet rocked this weekend. So he was like, you got to go through all these totes. I was like, what? <laughs> guys, mm. I, and I honestly just didn't even remember the totes in there when I showed y'all my junk. Guys, I cleaned out 19 totes that are those huge industrial size totes that you get at Lowe's for 70 bucks. The black ones with the yellow tops and the wheels on them. I went through 19 of those, okay? I've got a lot of junk. But some of those, about maybe, I don't know, six or seven of those, I do have to say was stuff like the stuff that goes inside at Christmas, like the Christmas decor, stuff that really isn't crafting stuff, you know? But I am happy to say I did whittle my stash down to three of those big totes. I have one for Christmas, one for Easter, and then one for fall slash Halloween. And I'm very proud of myself. I worked all day on that project and ended up hurting my shoulder again. Y'all know that it watch my channel a lot that I have to have uh, injections in this shoulder quite often, like every three months, because it, it's got a lot of arthritis from softball injuries. Anyways, um, I hurt my shoulder and I lost my voice because of all the dust in the garage. But hallelujah, our garage looks like a normal person's garage now. Um, and I'm very, very proud that I did that. And at the end of this video, I am going to show y'all the new hoard, the new junk that I accumulated. Because right now we've got it on the front porch of my craft room until we get the garage finished. So I just wanted to be totally honest with y'all because... Some of y'all may have been looking at my junk on the front porch and been like, she really don't have that much, honey. And need I say, I've only been crafting about four years of my whole life. Before those four years, I never crafted, like ever in my life. I promise you that. And in those four years, I accumulated that much junk. I'm not proud of it, but sometimes it'll turn around and bite you in the butt before you even know what you've done. So anyways, with all that being said, I started looking through my new stash that I've got out there and I started realizing that I had multiples of some things. And when I say multiples, it's mostly two of, of the same items and you find that a lot in thrift stores. I don't know what I was thinking if I'm going on Noah's Ark and I'm collecting two by two. That way, if, uh, you know, the end of the world's coming or whatever, at least we got two by two on our craft supplies. I don't know. But that's what I thought that it would be much easier to do the video. And instead of knocking one project out, we can knock two out at a time and scooch them on over and get ready for some more junk. So anyways, with all that being said, I've blabbed long enough. Let's get into the video so you can see my junk. Listening to that intro again, it sounds so inappropriate to say that, but you guys know what I mean. So here we've got two plaques, and of course these came from the thrift store. And somewhere along the way, I took these little hooks that have like the little um, screw end back, you know, like you screw them into whatever. And I think they're just called cup hooks, honestly. I put those in there because I'm notorious at losing my keys. And I thought that these would be really beautiful if we painted it black velvet. It's my favorite DIY black color. And I've been using these little old cheap brushes that I got off of Amazon. They were like maybe three for eight bucks. And I really like this style of paintbrush. I like that it has the pointed end. It makes it so easy to get in all these little nooks and crannies. So if you want to try some of these out, you can get them in my Amazon store. Like I said, I was in a pinch. I needed some really fast. And so I just ordered these thinking they might last me for literally a week or something. But I've been using these for uh, quite a while now. And they are really good paintbrushes. 
Guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, I would like to ask you to please give me a big thumbs up. That's the like button. And don't forget to leave me a comment, even if it's just an emoji. Those things help out my channel tremendously, more than you'll ever know. And of course, by subscribing. And on the last video, a lot of people said that they noticed that YouTube had unsubscribed them and that they were glad that I had told them to just double check. Under the title of the video, beside my name, you'll see if you're subscribed or not. Once these pieces were dry, I took them outside and I used my favorite spray sealer I just get this stuff at Walmart and it's amazing to just seal it when you're on the run. So then we're going to start off with this beautiful collage de fleurs. And I just think this is really pretty. It's a lot of larger flowers. It's eight different pieces, but I found some in here that were small enough to go on here. And that is the reason why I picked that matte black color because I think it's absolutely gorgeous up against this creamy beigey white of these roses. And I tried to cut them down like as close to the image as I could so I would know if I had any hangover or if I needed to like cut little small pieces of the leaves off or anything like that. Now, this is the new transfer that came out from IOD in their spring collection, this last spring collection, and I think it's so beautiful, and you can never go wrong with flowers. Now, if you've never tried one of their transfers, they're really easy. You just pull off that white backing that they come on, you lay them down, and then they send a special little tool that you can use to get it on your project. Now, these transfers will stick to almost anything. There may be one thing that I found that they don't stick to, and that's wax. <laughs> I found that out the hard way. And so, these transfers are really easy to apply. All you do is go around, and I've got this in fast motion, like where those little divots are in the sides. I kind of use my fingernail because to me, it's just easier, and it really doesn't matter how you do it as long as you get to the end result. You know what I'm saying? So some people may be like, I can't believe she uses her fingernail, but guess what? I get the same result, and for me, it's easier, so why not? You know, but I go around, and I like to hold up the edge of my transfer. I find that it releases easier that way, and it's just so beautiful every time you peel off that backing. And if for some reason, like one little piece doesn't stick down or whatever, you just, I kind of hold mine in place with my, with one hand almost. So that way, if it doesn't, I can just gently lay it back down in that same spot and go ahead and finish up getting the rest of what didn't come off onto my project. But that rarely happens for me. Now, I hope that you will find these projects fairly easy like this week, like I said, I, I hurt my arm when I was out there doing the stuff out in my garage. So I kind of have to take it slow, which is perfect for somebody who is a beginning crafter. Or if you've never used these ILD products before, you can see how easy they are to use. Or if you're on the fence about using them, it's a good starter place. You know, just a simple project like this one. And sometimes you don't have to do that much to a project to make it totally gorgeous. And I find with what I'm going to be using these for, which is just to hang them up when you come in my door for keys, they're going to be plenty sufficient and they still make a big statement, especially with that beige color against the black. I just love it every time. Now, once you get your piece onto your project, don't forget to burnish it. And that just means where you use that, that paper that it, that it came off of and rub it over the surface. And it's basically just giving it a really good adhesion. And honestly, at this point, who's surprised that I'm going to be using the bronze wax paste? I've been using this stuff in the last few videos, and I'm just crazy over it. And it's probably going to be a lot of my, like, spring slash summer decor. And there's just something so beautiful about that black against that bronze. All I do is put a little bit of it on my finger and rub it wherever I want it to go. 
Now, if you're interested in any of these projects, any of the transfers, or pretty much anything that you see me use in my videos, I get most of my supplies from Miss Lori over at Milton's Daughter. It's www.miltonsdaughter.com. And if you've ever read the comments, you will see other people just singing her praises about her customer service. She's amazing. She's the only small business owner I know that will call somebody just to get an order right. And people like that and respect her for that. So look how beautiful this is. As soon as I get that on there, it just takes my breath away. It's so pretty. Now I went over my second piece and I did the exact same thing. I just rubbed it all over the highlights and this was very simple and easy but I hope you like it. Well, I wanna take a ride in the whip in your mind Take me all around to the thinking places where you spend your time Ain't no place I'd rather go You're a funny little critter and I love you so And I wanna take a ride in the wheel in your mind I come and sit down with me in a rocking chair now as i was going through some of those treasures that i had forgotten about in the garage i come across this old purex bottle it's from the 1950s and I wanted to look it up real quick just to kind of see about how much these go for. And it looked like anywhere from about 20 bucks up to maybe around 40 something like that. But it's just an old Pure X bottle. I have no intentions of selling it, but I do want to set it out by my pool or just, you know, with some decor for outside. So... What I'm going to do with it is first clean it up real good because it was nasty. And then we're going to use the seed catalog. Now, this one is one that came out last year. And I believe Miss Lori might still have some of these. I'm not 100% sure, but you can check with her. And I wanted to show you some of the most beautiful things that are in here. Guys, this seed catalog is Last year, the people were going crazy. They couldn't keep it on the shelves. It was one of the most popular ones that I've seen in a long time. Now, I cleaned this bottle up, like I said, the best that I could, but it is old. And it still had some, like, run spots on it, I guess you would call it, where it looked like Clorox had kind of maybe dripped down it over the years. But I kind of liked that look, to be honest with you. So, I picked this one transfer. I wanted something really simple, but something that would jazz up, because, you know, the, the beauty of this is just that it's something old and vintage, you know? But I want to set it out and people be like, you know, just like a, a topic while we're sitting out the pool or whatever. Because everybody always asks me, you know, where'd you get this and this and that? Where'd you get that at? Because I have so much, you know, junk basically sitting around as decor. But to me, that's beautiful. I mean, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And most of y'all are like me and we're attracted to rust and we're attracted to junk. And we think that that's beautiful. And that's okay because it takes all kinds for this world to twirl, honey. So I went through with my little um, tool that they sent me and my rust, uh, rusty, trusty fingernail there. And I went through any little bits that I might be having trouble getting off. I thought, oh my goodness, I hope this sticks to this bottle because, I mean, I had put cleaner on it, you know, to clean it. But, I mean, imagine how much Purex has been spilled out of this thing over the years, too. So I thought, mm, I don't know if this, tra if this transfer will work or not. But it did to my surprise, and it turned out beautiful like always. Now, when I was finished with this piece, I took it outside and I sealed it with that spray, that Rust-Oleum that I showed you before, because I don't like to put liquid patina or big top over my projects like this because sometimes it can make like a, a not a film, but you can see it, and I don't want that. I'm going to use this beautiful DIY paint called Carnival Red, and boy, is it ever. And when I first got this paint, I thought, man, I ain't going to use this for nothing because I don't have a lot of red in my house or, 
you know, a lot of red decor, but I have found that there are times when I really, really want this beautiful red color. And this was one of them because the top of this, and I'm sorry, I'm a little out of frame there, but the lid of my bottle was still old and rusty and crusty looking, which I liked, but I wanted to give it that beautiful red color that's in the transfer. Now we're gonna move on to another Purex bottle, and this is just a smaller version of what you just now saw. I used this inlay last week, and it is the Petite Fleur Red, and there's also a pink, which I thought I was gonna like the pink better, but surprise, I like the red better. And I put it on an old flower sifter last week, and I fell in love with the way it looked. So. I didn't know if it would stick on this Purex bottle or not, but I thought, you know what? We're going to give it a try because my channel is for learning, and I know a lot of you are not going to want to be wasting your inlays, so why not let me do it and see if it works, and then we'll know. So what I did was use a little bit of the liquid patina. I squirted down. I have a little mister here. I misted my piece and you lay it down with the paint side down. It's very easy to tell which side has the paint on it. And then I just kind of dab it down with my finger, make sure there's no wrinkles or bubbles. And then you're supposed to get a baby wipe and kind of dab off any extra water. And I realized that I didn't have any baby wipes. So what I did was just grab a regular napkin and squirt just a little bit of that water on there. And that Mr. Bottle has been crazy. And it squirted all over the side of my shirt there. And I'm not sure what's going on with that Mr. Bottle. But it was still squirting water as I was doing this. And you see, I got that little bit of extra of that liquid patina off of the top of it because I don't want that filmy look on it. Now we're going to let it dry and see if it turns out. So I let it get about 90 to 95% dry, and then I just misted it once again with my mister bottle, and very, very slowly I took this off. I barely have this sped up at all, so you can see how slowly I was coming up. I felt a little bit of resistance in the middle, so I wet it a little bit more, pushed in with my finger, and peeled it back. And to my surprise, it stuck on this bottle. I mean, the inlays are paint, but in my mind, I've never even thought to put them on projects like this until I did on that flower sifter and it's opened up a whole new can of worms. You know, sometimes we can learn by our mistakes and by watching each other. And I'm sure a lot of y'all was wondering, hey, I wonder if it sticks on this or that. Well, if you if there's anything that you want to know if it sticks on, just let me know because I ain't scared. I'll try it and it ain't no problem. So I'm gonna go around the top of this bottle just like I did that other one with the Carnival Red. There's something about that brown color with that red that just gets me every time. I think it's so beautiful. Now we're gonna go into our next project, and these are two baskets that I found, and don't ask me how I got two of the baskets like this and never knew that I even had them. I must have picked them up on a sale or at clearance or something, but they're really pretty baskets. I didn't really honestly want to fool with taking the sides of them off and doing anything to it. I just wanted to do some little something to spruce it up so I could use it in my own home. I was looking through my transfers and I came across traditional pots. This is one of my favorite transfers, so I even forgot I had it. It's got all these beautiful blue colors in it and it's got a white color in it and then there's even a black one. So I thought, I just want to put something very simple like flowers on here. And I was going to put this whole piece that says Le Hardin, and then I thought, I better not. I'm just going to put the bottom part. 
I'm really not sure why I decided to put a piece of parchment paper under there. I think it was because I've never put it on a fabric like this before. This fabric was very thin and woven. And I was afraid in the back of my mind, you know, thinking maybe the transfer won't stick. And do not laugh at me because I used this Christmas tree as a backer so I could lay it down, or not as a backer, but as a hard piece so that I would have something to lay it down. This is the hillbilly, lazy butt way of doing something instead of just untying the sides of the basket and laying it on a firm surface. I break off a Christmas tree and stick it up in there. But hey, I digress. You know, you got to do what you got to do. And like I said, as long as you come out with the same, you know, ending, you're all good, honey. You won't find any judgment from me. Now, some of these projects that I'm trying out today are just kind of throwing the hat up and seeing if it works, to be honest with you. And to my surprise, it worked. And I used that liquid patina that I already had out to seal that transfer down. They do recommend that you seal them. And especially on a very small woven surface like this, I mean, you definitely need to. Now, I'm just using this small piece of a transfer. And it's from the same book, Traditional Pots. And this time, I decided to omit the parchment paper because I must have came to my senses and thought, what are you think? What's the parchment paper going to do? You know, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know where my mind is when I'm working and I'm in my flow. <clears throat> I get in such a hurry to see the project ended, to see what it's going to look like. I get excited. And sometimes I forget to do simple little things that I know to do. But hey... <clears throat> that's just the way the ball bounces. So this second one, it came off very easily, no problem. And I realized up at the top, I had enough room to put that other word that said Le Hardin. And it too went off without a hitch and it came on the top up there just as though it had always been there. That's what I like about their transfers. They're so gorgeous, and they have the smallest halo of any other transfer in the business. I mean, what I mean by halo is you can barely see like a little white film on the very end of your project, and they call it a halo, and theirs is the smallest. But when you burnish it, you can't see it at all. It just goes away in most cases. Thank you guys for sticking with me through today's video. Now, if you do want to see all the junk that I was telling you about at the first of the video, I'm going to show it to you now. But if you have to say goodbye, I sure do hate it. But I did make it quick and I just kind of narrowed it down to about two minutes worth of footage. And also, if you're interested, a dear friend of mine is going to be having a craft sale on Whatnot, and it's going to be Friday, April the 5th at 7 o'clock Central Time. I'll leave the link below. Now, this is our trailer that we have. All this stuff that you see right here is all crafting stuff, except for those two little Christmas trees and also the um, little Christmas things that you see there that go outside. Now, everything else that you see, these black bags, they're all full of crafting everything. And then the four garbage cans are all full of crafting things. I never counted exactly how many black industrial size garbage bags that I ended up with, but there was a truckload. Now, here in just a second, I'm going to show you what my front porch looks like now that I've gotten all this garbage out and and um, categorized and put where it needs to go. But I wanted to say that that flower pot that's right there holding that Christmas tree, that Christmas tree is like cemented down into the flower pot because I know somebody's gonna say, I would have kept that flower pot. And the whole other side of that flower pot is cracked all the way out. So there was no way I could have used it. I knew somebody was gonna be thinking that though, because I would have. So here's what my front porch looks like right now. This is what I actually ended up with. Remember I told you that I had three large totes that are full of only crafting things. 
And the other stuff that you see here, like these smaller blue totes, those are things like Christmas that goes outside, Christmas that goes inside. Um, then there's also like fall that goes on the outside and the inside of my home. So I don't count those as actual crafting things because they're not. Those are things that I've bought somewhere along the way. Now, like I said, I'm still very proud of myself for doing this, and I want you guys to come along on this journey with me and let me know how you're doing. I hope that you really enjoyed this video today. I know it was a lot quicker than most of my videos, but with my big injury that I had over here after toting all this stuff around this week, and there's just been a lot going on in my family this week. My grandson has a ball game tonight, so I just had a lot of things on my plate, and I had to kind of make it short and sweet. And when I saw these multiples, I thought that would be a great way to get rid of two things at one time. Remember, we're jumping on Noah's Ark with all of our crafting supplies because no matter what happens, we're taking it with us. <laughs> and guys, don't forget to double check and make sure that you are still subscribed to the channel. There were several people that had been unsubscribed and didn't want to be. So please check on that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we would love for you to be a part of our family. Just hit that little red button and become a part of it. Also, if you would, give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment. Like I said, even if it's an emoji, it all helps out. And I'm going to be doing this series for just a little bit. I'm not sure how long on crafting my junk. And I'll be back here real soon, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise.